The second part of uh, chapter 13 looks at immunodeficiencies, uh, inherited immunodeficiencies, mostly. Um, I don't spend, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this in this particular lecture, because if you're in my course, we've been working through these all semester, all, all the way along. If you're not in my course, there's a bunch of examples and detailed explanations of a lot of diseases in the text. So you can, you can catch up with those there. But in short, an immunodeficiency disease is going to either be a primary immunodeficiency disease or a secondary. When we're talking about a primary immunodeficiency, we're looking at anything that's inherited, so passed down from parents to offspring. And so there's a defect in the genes that code for any one of the bazillion proteins that are involved in the immune system. The secondary immune um, deficiency that can result by way of not so it's not because of inherited defective genes, but rather there's some sort of environmental factor that um, causes the immune system be, to be depressed. This can be because of immunosuppressive drugs. If somebody is on an immunosuppressive drug because of a maybe an organ transplant or they have an autoimmune disease, those can. Uh, affect the ability of the immune system to fight off pathogens. And so we call it a secondary immune disease. It's not acquired. Numerous inherited immunodeficiencies have been identified and there are certain proteins associated with each one of those different deficiencies. And there are, uh, like I said, there's a bazillion proteins that are involved in the immune system. And so for every one of those proteins, there's likely going to be some sort of immunodeficiency associated with it if there are um, yeah, so, um, more than 200, so maybe not quite a bazillion, but close. Um, of these primary immunodeficiencies. And since we've been able to do complete genome sequencing, we've been able to identify um, many more because lots of times we could only tell phenotypically, but now we have genotypic tools and we're able to tell at a different level. Most of them though, thank goodness, are very rare. Very, very rare, where there might be two people in the entire United States that might have it. And so that that is good, um, but it also means there's probably not a lot of research out there being done on those extremely rare diseases. Primary immunodeficiencies then, because they're inherited, can follow three different inheritance patterns. They can be dominant, they can be recessive, or they can be X-linked. So if you've taken genetics, you know what inheritance patterns like this look like. If you haven't, I'll give you a tiny little bit of background. But when we're talking about a dominant uh, inheritance pattern, that means one allele from mom or one allele from dad is going to mask the other one if it is recessive. And so syndromes that are due to dominant alleles, defective alleles, then will show up in children who have um, any one of those alleles. So it can be, um, they even if they get one functional allele from a parent, they're still going to have the one function, dysfunctional from the other parent. Um, <clears throat> recessive alleles, are opposite in that they're only going to be expressed phenotypically or at least fully phenotypically if uh, both, sorry, my nose is gonna, that was gonna sneeze, if both alleles are recessive. So if there is one um, gene that is correct and, and not defective, it'll mask, it'll, it will compensate and take care of um, that defective gene. And so we typically don't see any uh, immunodeficiency manifestations with this, potentially, depending on what the gene is, you can have maybe a lessened immune response, but you're still going to have one uh, correct gene making the right protein and making it so it's functional. These individuals, though, that have one recessive uh, are called carriers because they can pass that recessive on to their offspring. And if they create an offspring with someone else who also passes a recessive, then you would end up with a child who would have two defective copies and therefore would have the immunodeficiency. So in other words, heterozygous individuals typically are not going to have the disease. Uh, you need to be homozygous for the recessive trait. 
X-linked diseases means that the gene that's being encoded for that's defective is on the X chromosome. So for females, we don't see too much of an issue because there's two X's and usually there's not going to be two different effective um, genes on each chromosome. Uh, but males, for example, only get one X. And so if it has a defective gene, then they will have the disease likely. And so disease occurs in females only when they inherit both X's with defective uh, genes on there. So males have a, a much higher likelihood of having an excellent disease than a, a female. And really the types of immunodeficiencies range from the functions of the immune system. So if there is a um, deficiency in an interferon gamma receptor, cells won't be able to respond to interferon gamma. And so phagocytosis is going to be decreased because macrophages will not be activated. If there is an immunodeficiency that leads to a decrease in antibody production, that's going to be an issue for anything that's cleared by antibodies, which tend to be bacteria, because bacteria are opsonized by antibodies and then taken up by macrophages, can also be an issue uh, with complement as well. If complement is not, if there's a defect in complement, that will also be an issue for bacterial infections. We can also see um, some viral infections with antibodies uh, because neutralization doesn't occur, but more often we'll see um, issues with T cells not being able to help leading to viral infections. Uh, and then just straight up def def um, defects in T cell function. And if a T cell is um, dysfunctional, then the whole immune system is going to be dysfunctional because T cells really run the show. So in the end, this big picture of immunodeficiencies, and again, your text has a whole bunch of immunodeficiencies provided for you with background on them. Um, we've talked a lot about them in class, if you're in my class. But there's really three kind of big ideas here with immunodeficiencies. If there is a deficiency in the complement cascade, notably on the early end, like the C3 um, type end where maybe C3 is enclaved for some reason, that will lead to an issue for bacteria that are re uh, removed by phagocytosis. So bacterial infections uh, tend to be the major issue we see with people with complement defects. Now, if, <clears throat> let's go to, okay, so that's, that's this one. Now let's go over here. If there is some defect in the antibody production that is going to lead to an issue with bacteria as well, but notably pyogenic bacteria. Pyo means pus. And so pyogenic bacteria like um, Staph aureus, Streptococcus, um, pneumonia, um, I think Streptococcus pneumonia, group A strep for sure. Uh, these are <clears throat> bacteria that drive a neutrophil response. Neutrophils come in, but if there's no antibody coding the bacteria, then the neutrophils will just die there without phagocytizing and create a lot of pus. Uh, and so it, it leads to defective B cells, not being able to make antibody, not allowing for phagocytosis to occur. And we can also see defects in antibody in other situations as well, but that is probably most notable. But the most severe of all immunodeficiencies or when T cells are affected. If a T cell can't be stimulated, whether it's a CD4 positive T cell, um, well, in the case of skin, if it's a CD1 positive T cell defect, we're gonna have a major issue with viral infections. If it's a CD4 positive T cell defect, we're going to have an issue with the entire immune system. We call this SCID, severe combined immunodeficiency, because if T cells, CD4 positive T cells can't do their job, B cells can't do their job. And so it's combined and it's severe because nothing happens. Essentially, there's no immune system beyond the innate immune system. So usually then we'll see only um, a very shortened lifespan uh, with SCID unless they're able to do a um, hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Bone marrow transplants are the only cure for skin. Okay, we'll leave on that happy note. Uh, <clears throat> 
that's that's all I have for for chapter 13.